Hi, I'm Willie. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for being here. I appreciate each and every one of you. And what we're going to do in this video is we are going to adopt a switch and an access point to our GCC appliance. So I've got a couple devices back here in the rack. You will see those, but let's go ahead and get into it. So we're going to sign into our GCC 6010. And we are going to go to the network nodes option. And once we're over there, this is the place where you can set global settings for the devices that you're going to manage. And what I mean by that is under Wi-Fi management, we can set up all of our SSIDs, all of our PPSK, all of our radio settings, mesh, block list, all these. And these are global that can apply to all of the access points that we are going to adopt. Now, when it comes to the switches, we can do the exact same thing. So we can push these global configurations over to all of the switches. And we are going to um, get into deeper configuration on this. But what I want to do now is I want to show you how to adopt these devices. And we're going to get, we'll go into these devices in more detail. They are somewhat newer devices, but I want to show you how to get these adopted. So um, we're just going to do one thing for the Wi Fi real quick. We're going to go ahead and add an SSID. And we're going to call it, uh, and we're going to redo this because this is going to get deployed in, in production here. Now, I am going to keep the SSID band as dual band, 2.4 or 5 gig. I am going to make the security mode WPA2 with PSK, AES encryption, and I'm going to go ahead and put in my... WPA key, which has to be a minimum of eight characters. For this, I'm not going to do any block list. I'm not going to do any client isolation. Um, and then let's see here. We're not going to hide the SSID. We're really not going to touch much of anything else, except we're going to turn on voice enterprise because Grandstream honors quality of service, so they're going to make sure that our voice over IP devices on Wi-Fi uh, get the attention that they need. That they need, and then right now I don't have any devices there, but I'm going to go ahead and save this. And then radio settings. This is where we would come in, and we would, you know, if we were going to turn on airtime fairness, which we're not going to do that. We're not going to do band steering right now, but 2.4 gigahertz. We are going to leave at a 20 megahertz uh channel and what we're going to do is the channels we're going to we can do auto or we can dynamically assign by rrm you know how i kind of feel about that we'll try it out with this and see how it does the uh, radio power we're going to start that on uh, medium we're not going to do min RSSI yet. This is like if we need to tweak this because we're having problems with clients, we'll come in here and mess with this. We are going to turn on Wi-Fi 5 compatibility mode. On our 5G, we're going to change that to 40 megahertz. We're also going to change that to medium. And we're going to turn on Wi-Fi 5 compatibility mode. Under the switch... Uh, global configuration. I don't have any VLANs or anything set up. We might, well, we'll probably do this when we swap this other equipment out for this. So for now, I'm not going to do anything with port profiles. I'm not going to do anything with global switch configuration. Once we start putting this into production here, we'll come back and we'll revisit this. So the first thing we're going to do now that we've got our Wi-Fi at least set up, we're going to come over to AP management. We're going to click pair AP. Now, right here, it tells you the firmware version cannot be lower than 1.0.23.25. If too low, please upgrade it. So you can see that I'm actually running uh, the beta 1.0.25.33 on my GWN7661, which is an in-wall access point. So I'll do a whole review of that access point in an upcoming video. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click on that, and I'm going to click Save. And uh, what we're going to do is we are going to end up now being able to 
uh, control this this access point. So we'll give this a, a, a minute here. Shows us offline. But it, it may take just a minute. So while that's working, we're going to come over here to switch management. And we're going to take over device. It's going to find the switch. Up here it tells you for the switches. And this is a 7813P. I'll do a complete video on that. That it has to be on at least firmware 1.0.7.50. And you can see I'm on the, the latest beta, which is 1.0.7.68. So we're going to select that switch. I'm going to enter the login password. And then I'm going to go ahead and save that. And now you can see our switch is coming into the device. Go back to our AP. All right, you can see that we have uh, one online access point. And let's see what this says. New version detected, 1.25.19. That would actually uh, downgrade it. So we're not going to do that. We're going to leave this on the, the beta. And we got the little green light there. Let's go back to our switch. And if we click on our switch, now we can come in here and we can see all of the port information uh, the, for the traffic statistics. We can see our PoE. So you can see right here I'm powering the uh, access point. Here's our information about the switch. We can take a look at each individual port. This is a pretty nice view. If I click on a port, so I clicked on port one, I can now name the port, I can enable or disable, I can turn on link aggregation. If I have the one of those port profiles set up, which I don't yet, this is where I can select that. We can do port mirroring, we can do trust DHCP snooping, and we can do a profile override. So if we don't want to use one of our configured port profiles, we click that. We can come down here, select our native VLAN, our allowed VLAN, our voice VLAN, speed, duplex, flow control, ingress, egress, LLD, med, uh, network policy, TLV, all of our security settings down here. So we can override that. and when what we'll do when we do the switch review we'll set up one of these these profiles get ready for that that migration i was just kind of thinking over that in my head so that's how you override a port profile and right here you can see all vlans we've got one client on that port here's our debug information so right from this console i can do a ping a trace route i can do uh, ssh it's fantastic and then, like I said, here's that, that port profile. We'll get more into that because we also need to set up VLANs on the GCC before we set them up. Unless this layer 3 switch is going to be the router for that VLAN, which we can get into that as well. All right, go back to our AP management. So if we click on that, we can see all of the information. So right now on the 2.4 gigahertz, we're on channel one with the width of 20, uh, 19 dBm. And we are on channel 40 on the 5G with a 40 megahertz width at 19 dBm. We've got no clients, but let's make sure, we'll use my phone here real quick and we'll make sure that that is actually broadcasting. Like you wanna see if the proof is in the pudding, right? So, my uh, phone is looking for the SSID, and I don't know if you can let's see if you can see this. But down there at the bottom, it says WH Lab, and that is the SSID. I'll connect to it real quick. Maybe let's see if I remember the the password I just set up. I'm authenticating. Uh, so this is really going to um, 
take your GCC experience to the next level. Now, I am, like I said, I am going to be replacing all of my equipment here with the GCC, with the Grand Stream switches and access points. And so we've got to get everything kind of laid out. Now, I could do a captive portal and maybe we'll do that. We'll throw uh, an SSID up there for um, maybe guests and we'll do a, um, a captive portal for the guests. I don't think we'll do vouchers. I'll show you how to configure it, but I probably won't run that. And now that we have our switch and our access point online, you can see under the overview, we've got one access point, one switch. And obviously I, I, I put the password in for the Wi-Fi management. Let's see here. Let me just edit this real quick. What was that? Oh, I forgot the zero on the end. <laughs> so it's just one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, seven, eight, nine, zero. Let me try that one more time. And I'll show you that it, that it does work. Let's see. How could I forget the zero on the end? It's one of those mornings, I guess. Obtaining IP address. And let me see if I can bring up the information here about it. Let me switch over here. So you can see that I am, I am connected. Signal strength is excellent. I hope so. The access points just back there. Frequency 5 gigahertz, WPA. And then let me see if I can bring up the IP address. So here you can see that I'm on the 192.168.80 network. It is Wi-Fi 5, which is strange. Maybe I should turn that off for these devices that have Wi-Fi 6 and 7. But then uh, transmit speed. So I'm physically connected at 400 megabits. That doesn't mean that that's what I'm going to definitely get. But I can run a speed test real quick, maybe and see what it is that I get. Uh, let me know down in the comments, do you prefer speedtest.net or do you prefer like fast.com or what is your uh, preferred speed test server when you're going to the internet? Now, obviously I have a speed test server internally that we could test. It's actually not powered on at the moment, but uh, these results, so I'm maxing my my upload um, and let's see here so I maxed my my upload and my download is was matching so this these are the results so 325 down when I'm connected at a 400 and then 48.17 up which is max maxing my my internet connection. So if you've got any questions about these, this is kind of the first step, get our switches adopted. And then what we need to do is we need to talk about in the next video, we need to take a look at how I'm running the current uh, setup and about how I'm going to transition that over. And that will definitely get us in the mode to add those VLANs for like IOT devices, because I do have a VLAN and an, IO, and an SSID specifically for IoT devices. So we've got to set that up. Uh, we need to set up our voice VLAN. Um, but with the voice VLAN, I want to set up the phone system on the GCC. So the GCC, remember, is that all-in-one box. Well, now it's managing this switch and access point. It's going to be our PBX. It's going to have our advanced firewall functions. I do have some port forwards coming into the network. We're going to have to do that. Plus, on the back end of this GCC, I need to change the network from the 192.168.80 network to the 192.168.66 network as the main network. So what we're going to do is I'll have to set up a VLAN on my current firewall that is not 192.168.66, maybe like a 172.16 or a 10. whatever. 
so that I can get the WAN IP of the GCC to not be 192.168, so I can go ahead and change that. And we should probably go ahead and do that. Let's do that in the next video, and that way that we're not kind of uh, you know messing around with that and causing problems later down the road. So we'll do that in the next video this week as we'll prepare that, and then we will set up our VLANs and I'm just doing this on the fly, thinking about this. If there's anything I'm forgetting for that next video, let me know down in the comments. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, comment, share, follow me on Twitter and TikTok. Those links are down below along with affiliate links, Patreon link. And if you need IT consulting, head on over to willyhow.com. Fill out the contact form and someone will be in touch with you as soon as possible. Come on over to community.willyhow.com. Sign up, uh, participate in the community and help us build that out. Once again, I'm Willie. I want to thank you for being here. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.